Uh, Diana and I yesterday filed um, legislation, the Helping Veterans Exposed to Toxic Chemicals Act, H.R. 2510. We were joined in this effort by Congressman Jim Cooper of Tennessee, and our lead Republican co-sponsor is Congressman Walter Jones of North Carolina. What this bill will do, uh, will, it will create three joint Department of Defense, Department of Veterans Affairs, uh, centers of excellence for uh, to deal with the prevention, diagnosis, mitigation, and treatment of a whole menu of, of ailments and conditions related to exposure to toxic burn pits in Iraq and Afghanistan. Uh, we have sent some two million uh, men and women to serve in Iraq and Afghanistan since the wars first began. It is estimated that upwards of 50 percent uh, have been exposed to toxic burn pits. A number of us in Congress have been fighting this issue for a long, long time. We began with an effort to get the burn pits banned. That was largely successful. We then initiated an effort uh, to uh, have everyone who was exposed to a burn pit included in a registry uh, so that, that their health could be monitored and so that they could be aware of the various treatments that are available to them. And this is now our next step, which is to create these centers of excellence. There will be three that will be chosen as a result of a competitive process. And it is important that we create these because, very candidly, neither the Department of the Defense or the Department of Veterans Affairs uh, has yet recognized the long-term health implications of exposure uh, to the toxins associated with these burn pits. This is a picture uh, of a burn pit uh, in Afghanistan, in Helmand Province in Afghanistan. Um, and this, by the way, is not among the more prominent of the burn pits. But just imagine being exposed to that each and every day for your entire tour of duty uh, in either Iraq or Afghanistan. Uh, so I think this is important work. Uh, these centers will be modeled on the centers of excellence having to do with TBI and post-traumatic stress disorder uh, that we, we in the Congress have put in place for, for our veterans and for our active duty personnel. Uh, so we have a lot of work ahead of us to get this, to get this uh, considered and passed, uh, but I think we have a good team assembled and our cause uh, is absolutely the right cause to pursue. So with that, let me ask my colleague, Congresswoman DeGette of Colorado, to say a few words. Thank you. <laughs> I want to thank Congressman Bishop for his unwavering uh, dedication to this burn pit issue and to making sure that our veterans are safe when they are in the field and that they are treated when they're at home. After more than a decade of war, it's really time to start listening to the men and women who are coming home with eerily similar complaints about respiratory conditions and other ailments. So today we're here to say we're listening and we want to help. America has sent some of the healthiest men and women to battle only to see them come home struggling to breathe, sick with debilitating and life-threatening conditions that present like asthma or constrictive bronchiolitis. They've been exposed, as you can see from this poster, to a swath of airborne hazards and toxins from burn pits, dust storms, explosions, and more. Researchers believe that their illnesses are connected to or made worse by their exposures during their military service. And that's why I was so honored when Congressman Bishop asked me to join him in co-sponsoring this legislation. You know, I don't co-sponsor legislation unless I intend to pass it. So right. we, we intend to pass this legislation. I was particularly interested in helping with this effort because as well as just the, the correctness of the issue, in my hometown of Denver, service members who are suffering from post-deployment respiratory issues have a premier institution right there to help them out. National Jewish Hospital has one of the first programs in the country to address the difficult problems surrounding deployment-related lung disease. So the bill that we would, we're introducing, that we introduced yesterday, will help us harness the best resources like those at National Jewish and some of our other nation's preeminent hospitals to help our fighting men and women win the battle at home for their health. 
So throughout my career, and I think Congressman Bishop knows this, I've worked very hard in support of federal research and biomedical research in particular because I think this research is the key to helping Americans live better and longer even with complex illnesses. This bill will go a long way towards seeing that biomedical research and treatments around deployment related lung disease become a reality and that we really target our efforts at finding the best methods and most successful methods of treatment. The bill will help ensure that the VA, the Department of Defense, and others better understand these complex illnesses and how we can provide health and, and veterans benefits. So I'm looking forward to working with all of our colleagues on both sides of the aisle, but in particular our courageous friend and brother, Mr. Bishop, uh, to make this bill a reality. Thank you so much, Tim. Appreciate it. Thank you very much, Congresswoman DeGette. Our next speaker will be Dr. Anthony Zema, uh, who is uh, a physician at Stony Brook University Medical Center uh, in the, uh, my district, the 1st Congressional District of New York. And Dr. Zema has been a leader uh, in dealing with this issue. In fact, he was the first physician to describe a new disease, the Iraq-Afghanistan War lung injury. Uh, and for his work on this issue, he has been very recently awarded the Albion O. Bernstein Award from the Medical Society of the State of New York, uh, which recognizes pioneering uh, work in, in uh, the medical profession. And Dr. Zema deserves particular commendation today because he is more than a little ill. And I thank you for making the trip uh, down here. And uh, Dr. Zema, please. I thank Congressman Bishop for his long-standing support of not only our research from the very beginning, but also this issue when he uh, passed the burn pit registry uh, bill initially and tried to ban burn pits in Iraq. Uh, now, uh, with uh, the issue ongoing in Afghanistan and more uh, health issues ongoing, I think the ideas of centers of excellence for this topic is very timely. Um, we can harness the unique capabilities of Stony Brook University and Brookhaven National Lab we were the first to describe titanium lung with the National Synchrotron Light Source at Brookhaven National Lab uh, among soldiers who are deployed to Iraq and Afghanistan. Uh, and we have a unique animal model with the only samples uh, extant from Iraq and Afghanistan uh, burn pits. Uh, in collaboration with the EPA and Louisiana State University Superfront from the BP oil spill, we're now able to uh, contrast samples from that burn in the Gulf of Mexico to the burns in the burn pit areas uh, in an animal model. Uh, we're working on two new drugs. One has been FDA approved for, for clinical trial as of last month called VIP, uh, found, uh, which was discovered by my late mentor, Dr. Sammy Saeed, who is a distinguished professor at Stony Brook. And uh, another compound from Garner McKean Labs is called RUX, which when you give it in the mouse water bottle one month prior to administration of Iraq dust, prevents the injury and inflammation from the uh, dust. So I'm, I'm very excited about this legislation. I hope we can become one of these centers. And I think this is a great step forward scientifically and medically for our troops. Thank you, Dr. Zeman. Uh, now may I ask uh, Peter Sullivan, who is the founder of uh, the Sullivan Center and uh, uh, Sergeant Tom's, uh, Tom Sullivan's father. Peter. Uh, good morning. Uh, thank you, Congressman Bishop. Uh, I am uh, Peter Sullivan. I'm one of the co-founders. Uh, two of the others are over here, uh, my son Dan and wife uh, Jean. Uh, we founded the center after uh, Tom Sullivan, who was a sergeant in the Marine Corps who served with valor in, in uh, Iraq, uh, uh, died uh, complications of a very complex illness that was never adequately uh, diagnosed and a full range of problems from you know, respiratory, gastrointestinal. And uh, after he died, the autopsy revealed uh, you know, heart disease uh, he uh, had been referred to a, uh, a clinic that, uh, for medically unexplained uh, uh, physical symptoms, and uh, unfortunately uh, there wasn't much in the way of expertise to be applied. Uh, he expected to get a holistic uh, uh, diagnosis, a fresh look at, at uh, the problems that had been baffling his doctors for quite some time. Uh, we thought that this clinic he was sent to was, was, was uh, so, a somewhat like a center of excellence, so that term wasn't used in, in 2008, but uh, it, it is something that we thought then 
and after he died clearly thought there was much of a need for a center of excellence to deal with the whole range of, the, of, of illnesses that are never adequately explained but probably tied to environmental dis, uh, exposures that range from everything from burn pits to the natural dust in uh, Iraq and Afghanistan that carries heavy metals as well as all the other things that man adds to the uh, toxic mix. Uh, we commend uh, Congressman Bishop and uh, Congresswoman DeGette for their initiative in, in setting up centers of excellence that will help fill the gaps. These days there is a center of excellence for tra traumatic brain injury and psychological health, but there's a whole range of others. If you look at just VA gross data on utilization of health care, over almost 500,000 people who have received health care, which means half of them from the VA who served in Iraq and Afghanistan, have uh, ill-defined, medically unexplained medical problems. Uh, many of those uh, include a respiratory factor, but others as well. So you know, we, we, we can't go through another episode like we did with the Persian Gulf War, where still 250,000 people had, uh, had illnesses that were never medically explained, and to this day there still is not a clear understanding of the cause, much less uh, effective treatment or cure. So I think this, these are important steps to try to uh, deal with, with all of the other medical problems that ensued from uh, post-9-11 wars. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Uh, next, we, uh, we'll hear from Nick McCormick, who represents the Iraq and Afghanistan Vets of America. I want to uh, thank Congressman Bishop for inviting us out here today. Um, you know, this bill, uh, besides falling in line with IAVA's mission to benefit uh, veterans of the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, also is a crucial example of the pivotal role that Congress can play in the lives of service members, veterans, and their families. Um, just as the Congressman mentioned earlier, the burn pit issue has been around for some time, and each time Congress has tried to address it, it certainly has been a, uh, a difficult task. Uh, obviously, the burn pit registry was a great victory for veterans and service members uh, of the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. And this bipartisan bill seeks to build upon that and tackle the issue on a much wider and proactive scale. Um, and as, as, the, uh, as my other guests here have mentioned, um, this issue is not new to us. We know it, it's coming down the line, and I think that this sort of prescient, proactive legislation is exactly what veterans and service members need. Uh, obviously, we've seen the issue before with uh, veterans of the Gulf War, Gulf War Syndrome, and Vietnam, and Agent Orange, and so forth. And again, we just think it's crucial that Congress should take proactive roles in getting veterans and service members the treatment they need because of service-connected uh, health issues. So again, IAVA is very supportive of this bill, and we hope that Congress will move swiftly to uh, pass this legislation. And again, I just want to thank you, Congressman, for the bill thank and your work on the issue. Thank you very much. Thank you. And, and now we'll hear from Suzanne Charleston, who represents Burn Pits 360. Suzanne? Thank you, sir. Good morning. I first and foremost want to say thank you to the Congressman for your efforts. Um, this is a coin from my brother who lost his life, and I hope that you will keep that as a memento, as all the guys that have lost their lives due to the burn pits and things like, and um, the exposure that's over there. Today I'm here representing Burn Pits 360. It was founded in 2010 after Captain Leroy Torres came back um, and had all sorts of respiratory issues without knowing really what the source of it was. He's still battling that today. He's a vibrant guy. He was in a Texas State Trooper. He was a captain in the National Guard, and he came home sick. He, like my brother who lost his life in May of 2012 to pancreatic cancer, um, were all exposed to the burn pits. John and Balad in 2007, Captain David McCracken, or Colonel David McCracken, who lost his life to uh, actually brain cancer two years ago as well. These guys are faces and their families and we want to say thank you to the congressman for keeping this issue alive and well and in the faces of the, the community that can really make the decisions. And we encourage the VA to continue on their mission and thank them for their time and expertise in helping us treat these family members. The ones we've lost, we can't do anything about, but we can do things to help the guys that are the men and women that are service members that are still here. And with that, I want to say thank you very much. Sir. Let me just make one more comment before we take your questions. I, th I, th I think. I think um, 
uh, Mr. Sullivan made a very important point. We are now 20-some years out uh, from the first Gulf War and Gulf War syndrome, um, yet we do not yet have a full understanding of Gulf War syndrome, and we are 40-some years out uh, from the Vietnam War, and it is only uh, in as recently as the summer of 2011 or 2012 that more illnesses were added to the presumptive cause list with, as a result of exposure to Agent Orange. We do not want the same uh, time period to elapse uh, for exposure uh, to toxic burn pits. We want to jump on this as quickly as we possibly can, and already I would say that we're late. Uh, but this bill is an effort uh, to put in place the support system and the, uh, the, the scientific uh, infrastructure and the medical infrastructure required to see to it that we provide uh, the highest possible level of care to those who have served us uh, with such great distinction and great valor. So with that, I want to thank all of my colleagues uh, who are here with us today. I want to thank my colleagues in the Congress uh, for joining me in this effort uh, and hope that we can bring a great many more to the table. Uh, and with that, I'll be happy to take, uh, we'll all be happy to take any questions you might have. Yes, sir. Uh, yes. Excuse me, Chris Carroll, Stars and Stripes. Um, have you, uh, what kind of uh, cooperation have you, have you found from DOD and from the VA? Um, I would say that they have been slow in coming to the table. As I said, their current position is that they cannot describe long-term health impacts associated with, um, uh, with exposure to uh, toxins related to burn pits. Uh, that is an opinion that uh, is not broadly shared. Uh, in the medical community, and Dr. Zema, do you want to do you want to expand on this? So the longer you instill dust into, from Iraq or Afghanistan into a mouse, the sicker the animal get. Will get the higher the dose you use, the worse they will be. The dust causes suppression of the immune system, particularly a protective cell called the regulatory T cell. So the answer is, to eat the dust itself is bad. And, you know, that's, that may even be a separate issue from what's in the air that goes to lands in the dust. Yes, sir. You would establish three centers of excellence. Yes. Where would those go? Well, the, 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 there would be a competitive process, and the bill uh, describes uh, the criteria that the, that the hospitals or medical centers would need to uh, reach in order to qualify uh, to be chosen as a center. Uh, I think, you know, there, there's no question uh, that Stony Brook University Medical Center in my district is, has been at the forefront of this. There is no question uh, that National Jewish uh, Medical Center in Denver has been at the forefront of this and also Vanderbilt University uh, Medical Center in Tennessee. So those three are, I would say, well positioned to apply, uh, but there's no preordained conclusion here. They, uh, though the, the competition would be an open competition and any hospital or medical center that meets meets the qualifications is welcome to apply. We hope they do. Thirty million dollars. How do you pay for it? Uh, it would have to come out of the out of either the defense budget or the the veterans affairs budget. And what I would hope uh, is that we would recognize that this kind of treatment now. Uh, if we can, if we can diagnose early, if we can put in place better treatment protocols earlier, uh, then the long-term cost implications would perhaps would be diminished if we can, if we can diagnose and treat earlier. Other, yes, sir. Have you been in talks at all with the Republican leaders? Any cooperation? Um, we, we just filed yesterday, uh, I mean, and as I said, we've got Walter Jones on board as our Republican lead sponsor. We're going to try to get others, and then I think collectively we will go to Republican leadership and see if we can get this to move. Any, any other questions? All right, thank you all, and thank you to all of you. Thank you, folks.